Hey, everybody. Uh, happy Resurrection Sunday. It's Pastor Reed. Thanks for joining us at Colonial Hill Baptist Church today. Uh, I want to say something real quick to start our service. Uh, this is obviously an atypical Easter, not only for our church, but for the church. And uh, it's not all that atypical from the first Easter, though. If you think about it, when Jesus Christ came out of the tomb, the disciples weren't there, should have been. They knew he was coming out of the grave. His mother wasn't there. Geraldo Rivera wasn't there with the news team, right? In fact, the guards who were there were passed out. He appeared from the grave to a grand audience of none. Where were the disciples? The disciples, the Bible says in John 20, were, were locked behind doors for fear of the Jewish leadership. They were scared to go out because of what might happen to them or to those that they loved. But there would be a day where they would come out and they would celebrate and they would worship God in a big way. And they would share the good news of Jesus and create what we now see as the church. In a real way, this Easter is no different than that first Resurrection Sunday. A lot of us are in our homes with fear because we have our first coronavirus case in, in Scurry County. And we don't want to get out because we don't know what will happen to us or to those that we love. But there is a day that is coming very soon. And we can all go out and we can celebrate and worship in a big way and tell everybody the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we might have an empty church today, but there was an empty grave as well. And that's a good, that's a hashtag right there, Pastor Josh. Hashtag empty church, empty grave. Y'all need, somebody needs to post that right now. Uh, we're going to worship Jesus. I hope you will from your homes today. Uh, if, you, if you're comfortable, why don't you stand and let's worship. Come on. So good to be here with you this morning. Just in case you haven't gotten to tune in since I've started, my name is Carrie Jo Arndt, and I'm the worship pastor here, and my husband and I are so glad to be a part of this team. coming back again we believe we believe in this time of desperation and all we know is doubt and fear there is only one foundation we believe, we believe in this broken generation. With all is dark, you help us see. There is only one salvation. We believe, we believe. Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. We believe. temptations we believe 
Cloud by day, it's a sign that you are with me. The fire by night, it's the guiding light to my feet. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, to my Egypt, you took me by the hand, and you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God, I'll sing of all you've done, and death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love, because you stepped into my Egypt, and you took me by the hand. And you march me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you. God, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of
From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your love flows through my veins. I'm no longer. child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am, I am a child of God. Thank you that we're secure in you, God. Thank you that you've adopted us. Thank you that you bought us with your blood. Thank you that we have nothing to fear. Thank you that we are fearless sons and daughters that can just fix and focus our eyes on you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, our perfect peace. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. And when I am alone, oh, when I am alone, oh, when I am alone, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, just give me Jesus, in the morning when I 
and give us give us Jesus give us Jesus you can have all this world just give us Jesus give us Jesus Amen. I hope that you are worshiping with us at home. Uh, thank you so much if you're on Facebook Live or joining us on Local Channel 2. Uh, we are so honored that you would choose to worship with us this Easter. Uh, my name is Josh. I work with the students. And I'm going to ask you to do something, and I really, really, really want you to do it. Okay, you ready? Uh, I want you to take just a few minutes and actually greet the people around you as if we were in church, okay? Now, if your family's on your nerves, you can just pretend like there's somebody that you actually miss. If you're by yourself, you can give yourself a, your own little high five. Some of you aren't participating. I'm sure that's hurtful. I just want you to know that, okay? For those of you who were participating, you can, you can have a seat. Um, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I have two things to share with you today. The first is this. We love seeing your watch party pictures. And so I know some of you, my family right now is all dressed up um, in our home for Easter. Um, we would love for you to take a picture and to post it on your social media. Tag Colonial Hill because we'd love to see you. Even if you didn't dress up, we still want you to take a watch party picture, post it, tag us. Uh, there's something about just seeing your face, even if it's just in a photo. Uh, it just kind of makes this time a little more normal. Uh, th that's the first thing. The second thing is this. We are taking up the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. We're taking that up all month. And the way that you can give to that is go to our website, colonialhill.org. You can click on the little red icon in the corner. When that comes up, that's how you can give regular tithes and offering. But there's also a way that you can actually designate to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Everything that comes in for that offering goes to support North American missions, and I know those missionaries need our support right now. So if you feel led to do that, would you go online and designate that offering to go to North American missions? Um, I'm going to pray. I would love if you would join me and pray with me. God, we thank you for Easter. Thank you that, um, Lord, the cross was so brutal and it was so beautiful at the same time. But, Lord, the, the tomb was empty on Sunday. And, Lord, we just celebrate that, that you overcame uh, the enemy, death, hell. Like, you've overcame it all. You rose out of the grave. And, Lord, we serve you. We love you. We praise you. We glorify you. God, I pray that you'd open our eyes a little bit today so we could see you uh, more for who you are. God, that we would honor you the way you deserve to be honored. And, Lord, today we really would just worship you with all of our hearts and minds and souls. God, we love you. Thank you for the privilege it is to be your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Josh. Hey, I want to give you one op opportunity that he didn't mention uh, in a way to give. Uh, so as a pastor, I've been FaceTiming, Zooming, uh, calling uh, lots and lots of you. Um, and, and a lot of my week, week to week, has been counseling people. Counseling people who have lost jobs, who have lost incomes because they've taken pay cuts at work. Uh, there's just a lot of fear and, and timidity that's going on among our people, our church you. And I love talking to you, and I love encouraging you, but as we were sitting around as a staff this week, uh, all six feet apart, mind you, <laughs> we uh, started brainstorming, how can we be the church? Because the church I read about in Acts wasn't waiting for a stimulus check from the United States government, which might not even get here till the summer. Uh, they were dependent on each other, right? God is our provider, but Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12 that we are the body of Christ. So we're his body, and we're supposed to be his 
provision. And so knowing that there's a lot of our people that have lost income or lost jobs entirely, and there's some other people that God has blessed tremendously. I thought maybe we could marry these two groups of people and bless some that really need blessed. So here's what we're going to do. We've set up on our website uh, a, a COVID-19 relief page. And if that's you, if I'm describing you, you say, Pastor Reed, man, I, I could use a little extra income during this season of life because of some circumstances that have happened to my wife or my husband or myself. Or maybe you're by yourself. Maybe you got kiddos. We want you to go on to our website, colonialhill.org. And let me just say this. This isn't just for church members. This is for everybody that lives in Scurry County. We want to bless our city and our county well. And so I want you to go online and go to colonialhill.org. You'll see the COVID-19 relief really big. Click on that banner and fill out a very simple form. Now, let me tell you, it's completely confidential. I will see that, and about two other people that I trust uh, emphatically is going to see that. We just need to be able to, to see who you are so that we can bless uh, your situation. Um, so if that's you, go online. We want to be a blessing to you. Um, on the flip side of that, you might be here and listening and saying, I, I, could, I could help somebody. I've been down that road before. I've lost my job. I know what it's like to have no income. And God has blessed me, and I want to pay that blessing forward and make a difference. That's what we've been talking about, right, church? And so here's what I'd love for you to do. I'd love for you to go to the same website, colonialhill.org. And in the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to see this little maroon circle this little emblem here. You can do it even from your, your uh, mobile device or any smart device. Just click on that uh, little icon. It's going to bring you to this page, and it's got our logo there, so you know it's us. All right, how much would you like to give? And you can put $2, $20, $200, $2,000, whatever amount you want to put in there. Every single cent, listen to me, every single cent is going to go to help these families who've been affected by COVID-19. Every single cent is going to go right back into our county to help church members and people who are outside of our church to show them the love of Jesus. Come on. That's pretty cool. Okay, so you go on, you put how much you want to give, you click the next button, and then it has what fund should this be for. Now, we appreciate your giving, and obviously we have bills we still have to make. So if you want to just give today, you can give to the general. You can give to the Annie Armstrong, which Pastor Josh mentioned a minute ago. But you'll see the second option. It says benevolence blessing those affected by COVID-19. So if you want to give specifically to this fund, again, 100% of the proceeds going to this fund will go to bless people in our county who've been affected, okay? So click on that. It'll say, how often would you like to give this? You can do it just once. You can give it every week, every two weeks, every month until this thing ends. Um, and then it asks, when? When do you want to give it? You want to give it today? You want to give it tomorrow? You want to wait till your next paycheck? Um, and then how do you want to give it? If you give by credit card, um, they'll charge you a very small fee just to offset the credit card company fee that they send to this company. If you do it by bank account, though, it's completely secure. It costs you nothing. It costs the church nothing. It's completely free for both of us if you want to transfer money from your account to the church account, and then we will distribute that to all the people who fill in the, uh, the form online at colonialhill.org. So again, two things. If you need help, go to colonialhill.org, fill out the form on COVID-19 relief. Okay? And if you'd like to help, you'd like to be that blessing, I want you to go to colonialhill.org and I want you to give. And if you don't want to get online, I understand some people are sketchy about going on and giving online. You can mail a check. You can bring a check by the church this week. We won't let you in. We'll meet you at the door. <laughs> but uh, what a cool way to bless those. And let's be the church. Let's be the stimulus. Come on, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. So uh, I hope that you will uh, pray about that. Again, I'm not asking you to give. I'm just asking you to ask God what you should give, and whatever he says, just be obedient with that. We are wrapping up our series. We've been going through the last three weeks. This is week four, part four of what's God's will. It's the number one question I get asked as a pastor. What's God's will for my life? And, and the theme verse that we've been looking at is um, Proverbs 29, 18. It says that people can't see what God is doing. They stumble all over themselves, okay? They're going to stumble in their marriage. They're going to stumble in, in, in their money. They're going to stumble in their emotions. They're going to stumble in their dreams. They're going to stumble all over themselves. And the mess that they make is really not the problem. The mess isn't the issue. It's having a lack of clarity for what you should do other than your mess. That's the problem. And God wants you to attend to what he reveals. He's revealed it in scripture. And I've tried to be your spiritual tour guide through this series to show you, hey, this is what God, God wants four things for your life. We're going to talk about them in just a moment. He wants four things, and I, I see it as early as Exodus, second book of the Bible, chapter 6, all the way through Revelation. So Old Testament, New Testament, cover to cover, he says, hey, 
I've got something I'm trying to reveal to you. This is what I want for your life, church. This is what I want for your life, non-churched person who's watching today. God bless you. Welcome. He says, this is what I want. And if you'll, if you'll attend to that, I'm telling you, you're not going to be just blessed. You're going to be most blessed. And the word blessed there is, again, this contentment to my soul. It's that void that sometimes you feel it's going to be completely satisfied. That's what I want for you. Now, I want to show you the vision uh, that, that this is not ours. This isn't unique to us. This is all over God's Word. But we started this way. I felt like we had to start with the end in mind. That's always a great thing to do. So we started this four weeks ago is to make a difference. God wants to use you to make a difference in somebody else's life. And that's what I'm talking about with the, with the COVID-19 blessing. What a great opportunity for you to be a blessing to some other family. I'm telling you, you cannot make enough money, you cannot own enough cars, you cannot travel to enough places to really feel that contentment to your soul. It's only when you make a difference in somebody else's life. Even non-Christian sociologists like Abraham Maslow says the highest level of need that any individual has is making a difference in someone else's life, using oneself to benefit someone else. And I want that to be the case for you. Now, I can't truly make a difference. I can't know until I know what my role is. So we want to help you discover your purpose. I want to help you discover your purpose. Psalm 139 says, For you, God, created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb, and I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. And my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes, God, saw my unformed body. And every single day, all my days have been ordained for me and written in his book before one of those days come to be. God has a plan for your life. He's got every day mapped out. We call it that God has a purpose for your life. And I want you to discover that purpose. But the way you discover the purpose is you got to talk to him. The created has to connect with the creator, right? So you got to connect with him. i got to find out, God, what is it that you want from me? But I can't really see the future until I settle my past. That's what we talked about last week. I want you to find some freedom. Jesus Christ came to the cross to set you free. That's why he came. And there is power in the cross. There is power in the blood. I hope you'll go back and, and watch or listen to last week's message online. Uh, I think it'll be a real encouragement to you. But we want you to find freedom. Because a lot of you, you want to make a difference. It's not that you don't want to make a difference. It's just that you've got habits and you've got hang-ups and you've got addictions that you can't quite get over. And God wants to free you from all of that. I had a guy tell me, he goes, he goes Pastor Reed, my life's a mess. I can't do all that. I said, you know what? All of our lives were a mess before Jesus. You know what? Knowing Jesus doesn't make me better than anybody that's watching today. It doesn't make me better than you. It just makes me a better version of me. And I want you to experience that. So I want you to find some freedom. I, I think now is the time. Come on. How long will we? Let this be the year that we're going to step out and say, okay, God, Christ has come to give me freedom. I'm going to find it in Jesus' name. I want that to happen for you. It's time. And the last one is the topic I'm most passionate about. Um, <laughs> if, if you could cut me, I would bleed this message. The message you're going to get today if I got one more message to preach, if I knew for a fact that everything was ending next Monday, tomorrow, I would preach this message, the message you're going to hear right now. I want you to know God. I want you to know God. And emphasis on the word know. Because growing up, and I grew up in this church, and I had great mentors and leaders, but I don't really remember being taught a lot about knowing God. But when you look at what Christ says about Christianity, he says, I want you to know God. And when you look at the Apostle Paul, when he talks about Christianity, he says, I want you to know God. And that may not surprise any of you, but it shocked people when Jesus said it, when he taught it. Because they understood the word no differently than we understand the word no. When you look at the original Greek manuscripts, the, the, the way that the um, original New Testament was written, we see this Greek word, it's that one there, I, it, it's gnosko in the English, that's Greek to me. <laughs> but it means to know intimately, and it's, it's a Jewish idiom that's really just a polite way of saying a, a man and his wife coming together to conceive a child. So that's, that's what gnosko is translated as, is a man and a woman in a polite way. They didn't want to say that, so they would say gnosko. It was a polite way of saying that kind of intimacy. In other words, get close. 
And when Jesus said that, when he said, hey, God wants gnosko, he wants to get intimate with you, I'm sure there was a gasp in the crowd, like, oh, what? Right? I mean, because that would have been a pretty big deal. Because to those people, God was far off. He was big. He was distant. He was up there. We're down here. He was holy. And we're not. But he said, I want you to know him. I want you to know him. Not just know him. I want you to know him intimately. Intimately. I love this text out of Matthew 7. This is Jesus speaking. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Which is a problem because I know that was my plan for a long time. I was going to get to heaven and go, hey, Lord, Lord. Right? He says, not everyone who says that is going to get to heaven. Well, that's a problem because that was my plan. So how do you get to heaven? He says, only the one who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. Okay, well, what is God's will? He says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And you could pretty much put any religious act into that list. And you went to church in his name. You watched on Easter in his name. You, were, you got dressed up in your home in his name. <laughs> you read your Bible. You memorized some of it. You sang the songs. You prayed the prayers. And this is why I'm trying to get urgent with you. Listen to me. It's because many of you think that's how you get to heaven. Not just many, most. And he goes, that's not it. It's not about saying I did all of these things in Jesus' name. Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? These sound like really good Christian people. He goes, that's not a Christian. That's a problem. Many of you are basing your faith on the wrong thing. Look at the next line. It says, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. And he's using the word gnosko there. So if the people that don't get to heaven don't gnosko him, then that must mean that the people that do get to go to heaven gnosko, know intimately him. He doesn't want all these religious acts. He wants your heart. In fact, I, I, I put this quote up here. God isn't looking for religion. He's looking for relationship. That's what he's after. He wants a relationship with you more than anything else in the world. Part of my job as a pastor is not just to preach and to counsel, although I love doing those things. Part of my job as a pastor is to prepare you because I feel, I feel like I'm a teacher that's getting you ready for a final exam because <laughs> you're going to get to uh, this final exam and, and one of the questions on the exam is, uh, why should I let you in, right? There's going to be a day for all of us, Scripture says. It's called the Great White Throne Judgment Day. Whether you believe in God or not, even if you're an atheist, you're going to stand face to face with God someday. I promise that's going to happen. And in that moment, I don't know how it's going to all pan out. I don't know how it all works. We might be in a big pile of people, and he calls out, Bree Johnson, please come see me. Like, I, <laughs> yes, Lord. Like, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm going to get in front of God. And, and the question is going to be something like, why? Why should I let you into my kingdom? Why should I let you go into heaven? And I can tell you on that day, our response is not any religious answers. Well, I was a pretty good person. I didn't sin real bad. I washed on Easter. I read the book. None of those answers get us in. The answer that he's looking for in that moment is something along the lines of, I wasn't perfect, but I was in love. He was my Savior. Jesus was my Lord, and he was my friend. I knew him. I gnosko'd him. Look at this out of Matthew 15. It says, Then some Pharisees and teachers of law came to Jesus from Jerusalem, and asked, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? So they got a little upset, and I'm going to tell you what they're upset about, but I will just say this. There will always, always be religious leaders who think you're doing something wrong. That's, that's been happening since Jesus was on the earth. This is what was happening in that instance. They don't wash their hands before they eat. So when they would come into the temple, there was a basin of water, and you were supposed to ceremonially, ceremonially clean your hands before you went into the temple, but you couldn't just clean them. You had to clean them the right way. And there was a guy that was standing there whose job it was, <laughs> was to make sure you did it appropriately in the right way. 
And so when you, when you washed your hands, you couldn't let the water drip off the edges of your fingers. You had to raise them up so that it would drip off the bottom of your elbow. And so if you're washing your hands and it dripped off your hands, there was a guy that was standing there that would say, hell, you're going to hell. <laughs> that's, what, that's what would ha happen. So he says, they're not washing their hands before they eat. And Jesus replies, and why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Because why are you breaking the command for this tradition? What is the command of God? Well, if you remember in Matthew 22, Jesus is asked, what's the greatest command? 613 commands, what's the greatest? And he goes, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I just want you to love him. Love him. That's the command. You nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Again, Jesus doesn't want all these religious actions. They're great. He appreciates them. That's not what he desires. He desires your heart. That's what he wants. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. I'm going to show you one more passage, just in case you still don't believe me, that Jesus wants to know you. This is a parable that Jesus taught. So a parable is a story that Jesus would share to help us understand these deep spiritual concepts. He would share a story to make it relatable to people. People love stories. We learn through stories. This is the story he shares. He says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven, so we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went on to meet the bridegroom. And unfortunately, a lot of people, that's what they think that God wants. He wants us to be virgins. He wants us to be super pure. He wants us to be nuns. <laughs> that, that's not what he's after. Okay? Yeah, he loves that, but that's not what he's after. He's not looking for perfection or purity. But a lot of us, that's what we think. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. And the oil is going to represent that we're not serving enough, we're not giving enough, we're not attending enough, we're not reading our Bible enough, we're not praying enough, we're not singing and worshiping enough. It says the foolish ones took their lamps but didn't take their oil with them. They didn't do all these acts. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. The bridegroom, by the way, is Jesus. And, and he calls the church his bride. And he says, I'm coming back to get the bride. There's a day that's coming. I don't know when it is. Best I can tell, it could be any day now. And I'm not trying to spook anybody. I'm just saying that in the Bible, there are all these signs. And they've happened for the last two millennia. But here's the cool thing. It's where the first generation, where all of the signs have been happening simultaneously. So he could come back at any moment. He says, the bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, church, there's a, there's a cry that's coming. It's going to cry out, and you're either going to meet Jesus or you're not going to meet Jesus in that moment. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. In other words, go do more acts. Go read more Bible, memorize more scripture, go sing more songs, pray more prayers. You're not getting any of this. But look at this. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. And the virgins who were went ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you. Now, I left off the rest of that verse because there's a lot of ways that you could fill that in. Why wouldn't he let them in? Well, they probably because they didn't have any more oil. They didn't, or maybe they weren't virgin enough. Or maybe it was because they fell asleep. No. He says, truly, I tell you, I can't let you in. I don't know you. Gnosko, I don't even know you. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's not about an institution. We're not about an organization. We're about people who are passionately in love with the living God. That's who we are. Come on, church. Yeah. Amen. Right there in the comments. I'll throw a shoe right now. I'm so excited. Like, come on. That's
That's who we are. We're not an organization. We are a, we're a people who are passionately in love with Jesus Christ. That is who we are. He goes, I, I, don't, I want to know you. I want to know you so well. I want to be close to you. You say, well, how do you know if you're not in love? Well, you're not in love because you're going to show some symptoms. The first symptom, you're going to have a sense of powerlessness. Here's what that means. So if you know God, you're going to know his power. I'm just telling you. If you don't know God, you're not going to know his power. Some of you, if you truly, I'm telling you, truly gave your life to Jesus, you'd overcome that addiction. You'd overcome that habit that you know your life would be better if it weren't in your life. But you got to truly give your heart to Jesus. I mean, I'm all in. You'll sense his power. You know God, you know his power. The second symptom we see is a frustration with trying to do good. The Bible is incredibly hard. I have people tell me that. It's hard to follow, Pastor Reed. Yeah, it is. Unless you love him. I, uh, it, it's kind of like trying to be faithful. I want to try to be faithful to my spouse when you don't really like her <laughs> or like him. Right? I'm not going to try to be faithful to JC. I'm just going to be so madly in love with JC and then I get to be faithful. I'm not tempted to cheat on my wife. Why? Because I'm crazy, madly in love with her. I love this verse out of John 14, 15, and I misread it for years. But it says, if you love me, keep my commands. I used to always read that, well, if you love me, you do what I ask you to do. But you're not doing what I ask you to do. You're not keeping my commands, so you must not love me. Read, if you love me, you do what I ask you to do. That's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying, if you love me, you'll do what I ask you to do. If you love me, all that stuff's really easy. I don't have to try to love my wife. I love my wife. I don't have to try to obey the Bible. The Bible is hard. It's one of the most difficult things you will ever try to do if you don't love Jesus. You just got to love him. I want to love you. I want to love you. And the last maybe symptom of not being in love is you have envy of others who seem to be closer. You look at other people who are really passionate about Jesus and you go, man, I wish I could be that. Maybe you used to be more on fire than you are today. And I say today is the day to rekindle that flame. Let's start over. You just turn around, I promise he'll meet you. And let's go again, church, come on. So you say, okay, that's all good. What does it have to do with Easter? Well, I want to show you the verse that, for me, started this whole message. Paul writes to the church in Philippi, I want to know Christ. There he is again. I want to gnosko Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. That's good. I cannot, I cannot possibly find freedom or discover my purpose or make a difference on this planet until I know Christ and experience his mighty power. Okay. Well, can I show you one more quote? I like this. You can put this on, on the gram, tag it, put it on your refrigerator. God doesn't just want us to celebrate the resurrection. He wants us to have a resurrection of our own. Come on. That's what he wants today. That's what Easter is all about. He goes, I don't want to just celebrate the resurrection. I want you to have a resurrection. I want your life to be renewed. I want you to have new life in him, eternal life in heaven, and abundant life on earth. That's what I want for you. So he says, okay, I'm in. How? How can I do that, Pastor Reed? Well, let me give you some steps. I'm a next steps kind of guy. Let me give you some steps on what you can do. First thing you got to do is you got to love him. You got to love him because he loved you first. He loved you first. I have people that say, well, I, I, I got to get my act together, and then I'm going to start going to church. No. <laughs> you don't get your act together and then get to God. You get to God to get your act together. That's what God does. He just changes you and molds you, and it's not even a forced thing. It's, it's a willing thing because you just get more in love with him, and you're like, yeah, I'll give that up. I just love you. That's what I want for you. 
Did you know that even in your mess, as, as messed up as you are, the thoughts that you had last night, the things that you did this week, God's still crazy about you. He's thinking about you right now. If he had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. And long before you decided what you were going to do with him, he decided what he was going to do for you. He said, before you accept me, while you were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He said, I'm going to stretch out my arms on a cruel cross, and I'm going to drive spikes through my hands and through my feet to pay the price for everything you've ever done and everywhere you've ever went with your feet. I don't want you to accept me before I accept you. I don't want you to love me before I love you. I love you. And gr he loves you so much. Greater love hath no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. He doesn't call you his servants. He doesn't call you his slaves. He says, you're my friend, and I love you so much. Jesus loves you so much. So I want you to love him because he first loved you. This is 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. The second thing, we got to love him, and then we got to pursue him. You got to pursue in relationships. When I, when I landed JC, she played a little hard to get in the beginning, but uh, yeah, I pursued her, right? I mean, I took her on dates, and I did fancy romantic things, and I bought her gifts, and, and uh, I, she couldn't get over these good looks. I mean, come on, right? How could you not? How could you deny this? <laughs> I can hear you laughing through your television monitors. Um, but I pursued her. You got to pursue who you love. Do you, do you know this may surprise you? God wants to be chased. He wants to be pursued. There's so many instances in the Bible where he says, seek me. Seek me. Come after me. I love this out of Jeremiah 29, 13. If you seek me, you'll find me. When you seek me with all your heart. So don't just seek him. I want you to seek him with everything that you have. The way we like to say it is, I want you just to give us a year. Give us one year. But you've got to go all in. You've got to run the entire playbook that we're trying to implement here. I want you to come to our next steps class. I want you to get involved in the small group. I want you to serve on the dream team. I want you to go all in for one year. And I, I'm telling you, your life will be changed. It'll be amazing. God will bless you in a tremendous way if you'll do that. If he doesn't change you, I'll change churches with you. Let's go. I'm tell, I just have that much confidence. God's going to do amazing things in your life. What if this was the year you said, okay, I'm going to see if this preacher's right. I'm going to see if the Bible's true. I'm going to just press all in. I tell you, after one year, if there's nothing to it, then go back to your old way of life. But if you'll go all in, if you'll do it with all your heart, I'm telling you, you're going to find God. He's not elusive. He's not playing hide and seek. He wants to know you. He wants to know you. In fact, this is a little bit risky, but I'm going to try it. I want you to get near, if you're, if you're watching on Facebook Live, I want you to get near your monitor where you can actually um, communicate with us. And uh, if this is you, if I'm describing you, and you would say, Pastor Reed, like that was me. I was kind of skeptical, and now I'm not. Like I went all in, and I started serving, and I started joining small groups, and I've seen such a massive, incredible difference in my life. I see that my, I have more joy, and I have fulfillment, and I'm blessed, and all those things. What I want you to do right now, we're gonna, this is risky, I want you just to, uh, on the video feed, so where you're seeing the video, I want you just to hit like or love or something just a whole bunch of times so that the, hopefully the whole screen is filled with thumbs up saying, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. God is so good. That's what I want for you. <laughs> so we got to love him. we got to pursue him. And the last thing that all relationships need is they need commitment. You got to commit to him. Even whether it's a, it's a boss or a um, sports team, a wife, a husband, kids, like there's a commitment level to the relationship. When I got married, I didn't fully understand marriage either. I promise you that. But I still gave my life to JC. And I said, I'm going to figure this thing out. And here we are 14 years later, and we're doing pretty good. We kind of figured it out. But I didn't fully understand it, but I still gave my life to it. In the same way, I want you to give him your life. Give him your life. Luke 9.24 says, If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've experienced that. You're trying to hang on to it, and... 
it's at your fingertips. You're letting it go. But if you give up your life for my sake, Jesus said you'll save your life. I hope that um, a lot of you know that I'm a manly man. <laughs> I drive a truck, and I like football and fighting, okay? Um, but I'm going to tell you something that might lower my man card just a little bit. I kind of like musicals a little bit, if it's a good one. I will go with my wife to a Broadway show, and I, I can kind of get into it. Um, one of my favorites is a musical turned play, turned movie. You probably have seen it somewhere. It's Fiddler on the Roof. About this time last year, I shared this in, in a service, but it's a great story of a guy named Tevia. It's a, it's a Jewish family in uh, Tsarist, Russia in the early 1900s. And they're doing life, and he's got five daughters. God bless him. He's got five, five girls. And the whole story is based around the idea that in Jewish tradition is he would have his daughters match made. When they got to be the age of marriage, then Tevia would go to the matchmaker, and he would say, I find me a match for my daughter. Right? That's where you get the song, matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a find, catch me a catch. <laughs> so he matched them up together. Here was the problem is that uh, the daughters didn't like the guys that were picked out for them. They, had, they loved other guys. And so they're going to dad saying, we don't, want, we don't want to be with those guys. We want to be with these guys. And he's going, he starts, he goes, tradition, tradition, tradition. Right? I don't know why he does that, but he does that. Um, so he's trying to say, now this, and the whole struggle of the movie is the fight over love and tradition. But in the midst of this whole scene, Tevia starts wondering about his own wife and going, well, does she love me? I mean, after all, they were match made. So he comes in, and uh, the girls are gone. It's just him and his wife, and she's like, I don't know, doing some sort of chores around the house. <laughs> and he comes in, and he goes, do you love me? And she goes, what? He goes, yeah. I've, I've washed your clothes, and I've cooked your meals, and I've milked your cows and for 25 years. And she just goes on through this whole long list of things she does for him. And he goes, no, 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 no. Do you love me? And she's just really confused. She goes, I've been wash, washing your floors and ironing your clothes. And right, she goes through this list again. And he goes, no, no, no. Do you love me? And I just get a picture of God Almighty looking out over your computer screen or television screen or over a radio or listening to us on a podcast. And him singing out to you, do you love me well lord i mean i i did all i went I, I went to church on easter i went to colonial hill baptist church on easter went online i ain't got dressed up for you guys sang the songs i prayed the prayers no 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 no. that's not what i'm asking do you love me and let's go you love him because i'm telling you if you do love him, you can find freedom. You can discover why you were made. And then you can live the life that God intended for you to live on this planet. Here's what I'd love to do in closing. Is I would love to uh, give you an opportunity to respond. And I know this is maybe atypical. I'm asking for everybody to stay with me, okay? Please don't turn us off just yet. You know where I'm going if you've been to our church. Just hang with me, please. I would love for you to take out your cell phone. Hopefully you have a cell phone. I want you to take that out. You can email me. Uh, my email is pastorreed at colonialhill.org if you don't have a cell phone. Pastorreed, R-E-I-D, at colonialhill.org. But I would love for you to text a number. And I want you to text one of four letters today. We did this last Easter. We're going to do it every Easter. But I want to give you an opportunity to just tell me where you're at. And I just want you to be honest. That's all I want. I don't want fake things. I just, just right now in this moment, asking yourself that question, do I love him? Here's what I want you to text. I want you to text the number 325-221-3001. Then text that out. 
And this is all I want you to text. You don't text your name, don't text any emojis, just text one letter, and I'm going to give you four choices, okay? So hang tight. Let me show you all four, and then you tell me which one you are. I know we'd love everybody to do this. Even if you're in a house, you're watching this with family, there's five people watching it, I would love for everybody of the five that have a phone to text in this number, okay? 325-221-3001. I want you to text the letter A if this is you. I already know God personally. I know him. I gnosko God. And that's awesome. For some of you, you're not there yet, but today you want to be begin. You want to begin a real relationship, and I want to emphasize on real because it is 100% real. It's, as, it's more real than the relationship I have with you right now over, over the airwaves. It's a real relationship where you talk to him and he speaks to you. He will. If you're ready to begin that, I just want you to text that one letter, just the letter B, to that number, 325-221-3001. You say, Reed, I, I don't know that I'm either one of those. I'd like more time to consider what God wants to do with my life. That's C, consider. I, I just, I, I'm not in, I'm not out. I'm just kind of in that holding pattern. I just want to figure this whole thing out more. I, I've, I've enjoyed today. I've, listen, this one doesn't upset me at all, okay? I've always dreamed of creating a church where people who were far from God could come to church and just love it and go, you know what, I don't even believe like the pastor believes, but I'm learning something, and I'm growing, and it's helping me in my week to week. I feel like I'm lifted and encouraged. I don't want a, a room full of Christians, okay? I want a room full of people who are all passionately seeking God together. And you may not be there, but if you're considering it, I'd love for you to just be honest with me and text me the letter C. And the last one is, Reed, I don't ever plan on making that decision. That's just not in my plans right now. Last year, we had one person out of 625 people that were in service that texted D. And do you know, you may not ask for this, but every day since last Easter, I've prayed for that young man. Because I believe that a D will eventually turn into a B. So would you just be honest with me? With yourself, with God? Where are you today? Would you participate in that way with me, please? I'm asking you one thing, please. Text me one letter. A, I'm already there. B, I want to begin that today. C, I want to consider what God is doing in my life before I give my life to Him. And D, I don't ever plan on doing that. Text that number, 325-221-3001. I'm going to give you just a few moments to make that, that text. a joy to be able to uh, come to you today. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I love you. Some of you I don't even know, but I love you. I love you. Let me say it again. I love you, but it pales in comparison to the love that he has for you. I only love because he loved me so well. God is love, and love comes from God. That's what 1 John 4, 7, and 8 says. So the only way I'm able to love you well is because he loved me so well and he loves you, he's crazy about you. I do hope that if you chose B, I tell you what, you're gonna hear from me this week, and I don't want you to, no, again, it's gonna be confidential, just me and you, I just, I wanna follow up with you and give you some next steps, okay? That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna bother you, I'm not gonna send you a thousand cards in the mail, I'm just gonna encourage you. If you said C, I'm proud of you. Hope you'll keep tuning in, and when we can gather again, I hope you'll come visit us in person. And if you said D, thanks for being here. Maybe some family member dr drugged you in front of a TV. I'm honored. I truly am that you would join us today. And I'm, I'm going to be praying for you too. God bless you. Hey, we got a brand new series next week. I think it's going to help some people, and I, I sure hope that you'll join us next Sunday morning at 1050. God bless you.